Welcome to Disability News and Views. This month, we're going to be talking about an important topic in the disability community, pedestrian safety. This July is Disability Pride Month, and the City of Boston's Disabilities Commission kicked off a new campaign called Boston Breaks, which is an educational and outreach campaign for the public to learn about the unique needs of people with disabilities when using our streets and sidewalks. In this month's episode of Disability News and Views, we're going to hear from Jerry Boyd, an advisory board member of the Disability Commission, interview with Ken Meyer. And I'm going to let them take it away. So, Ken, I'm going to kick it over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, Jerry, it's nice to talk to you again. We've done this before. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but tell me very quickly, you are in the Boston Advisory Board. How long have you been there? Sure. Um, I've been an advisory board member for uh, about, I believe, about seven years now. So. Ah, okay. Well, we'll see if we can get to that if we have time. But July is a Disability Pride Month. Tell me, why the emphasis now on uh, Boston safety? Did something happen or, or why the sudden interest? Well, I, I think because the city is putting a, a great deal of emphasis, as, as we should, on learning new and different ways to, from, to get from point A to point B. It's getting ex increasingly difficult, especially in, in urban settings, greater Boston, so forth, to, for folks to get to commute from point A to point B. So the, the city is always thinking of new and innovative ways to do that. And one area of emphasis that they're pu putting on is through uh, the use, they're trying to get get more and more people to not use their cars to commute, but use use bicycles, and that can, can that can uh, pose unique challenges for uh, folks with disabilities, as I'm sure you you're aware, uh, Ken. Yep, absolutely. Are people complying with that? Is that happening now? Um. Well, that's one reason the Boston Breaks campaign exists. We're hoping to educate both the cycling community as well as uh, the disability community on ways in which we can share the space. We can keep each other uh, keep each other safe and make sure that that our sidewalks, streets, and roads are are safe for everyone. Well, I know we're doing this uh, program to promote it. Is there anything else as far as outreach that's being done besides that? Well, uh, you know, I think the Disability uh, co um, Commission Advisory Board, my fellow board members, we're always uh, hearing from our uh, our constituents on, you know, ways in which which we can help educate the public and 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 you know increase safety for on our streets and sidewalks, and and we're really hoping this. Uh, campaign Boston Breaks will start a good conversation between the cycling community and the disability community so that again we can we can learn from each other uh, how to keep each other safe so all right this is disability pride month tell me about disability pride month and what else if anything has been going on oh disability happy disability pride month to you as well Ken uh, yesterday was actually the 33rd uh, anniversary of the signing of Disability Pride. And earlier, uh, just a week earlier than that, we had uh, our Disability Pride uh, uh, event on City Hall Plaza, something that the city is very, very, very proud to, to hold every year. And this year was particularly special because because we held it on uh, the newly renovated City Hall Plaza, which is which is now fully accessible uh, for folks with all types of disabilities to to be able to enjoy. So that was really really exciting. The the mayor spoke. Uh, different members of her cabinet, the the city streets cabinet head uh, head who also was talking about the safety for all all residents and all visitors to the city. And there were about 300 uh, folks attended, more than we thought would attend would be able to attend the event. And it was just a really, really great illustration, uh, you know, of how far we've come in the city in terms of uh, since the original passing of ADA, but we also have so much more to do, so. All right, 
talk if you can about other challenges for people with disabilities that the city is and has been working on and trying to improve. Well, the city's always trying to f trying to uh, fix its road infrastructure, potholes, uh, potholes, things like that. It's uh, you know working on uh, you know different bike lanes and and you know curb cuts and things like that uh, um, to to help keep uh, keep all the residents safe. Uh, and that's w why I think it's a perfect time, you know, for an educational campaign uh, like Boston Breaks to to really emphasize the uh, unique challenges that, that face uh, the disability community when we're, when we're out and about on the streets. We want to make sure that, that we're, you know, folks with disabilities, uh, you know, are, are as aware of their surroundings as possible, uh, and also that, that cyclers and, and folks using uh, motorized scooters or, or whatever are also uh, aware of us and so th that we keep everybody safe. Now, I know when I was traveling downtown and still run into it, one of the problems, at least for people that were totally blind, were audio signals. I tried to get uh, audio signals installed on the property where I was living for a long time. And the argument was, well, we can't do it because it's owned by the state. And when you talk to the state, they would say, well, we can't do it. It's the city's responsibility. How has that been been rectified, if any? Well, that's a unique challenge. Um, uh, that's because a lot of the street signs and 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 curb signs and 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 whatnot are like, as you said, uh, aren't owned by the city. But I do know that the city, you know, is 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 continually working towards um, upgrading all their uh, pedestrian signs and and, and curb signs. Uh, to, to audio whenever possible, and, and uh, again, I think they're they're willing to try to work with the state, uh, you know, on the ones that they do not own in order to to improve them as well. But I think that's that's a unique challenge in, in a city, uh, you know, such as Boston, is that you know you can go down different streets and and there's different ownership responsibilities, uh, you know, sometimes of of the very next street that you're on. So it is a unique challenge. Could this be by chance one of the issues that the Boston Advisory Board may be involved in? I, I definitely, definitely. Um, you know, it hasn't come up recently, but uh, but uh, but yeah, it might be part of an offshoot of of the uh, of the Boston Breaks campaign, certainly. All right. Uh, in the remaining time that we have left, why don't you, if you can, plug the website for Boston Breaks? Sure. Um, let me get it here for you. It, it is boston.gov slash boston dash breaks, or you can email uh, uh, disability at boston.gov uh, to learn more. And you can also call the Disability Commission directly at 617-635-3682 or text 617-251. 2718. Very good. I ought to get Kristen to hire you as an extra agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I, you know, I think that's part of our work as, as advisory board members is to be the eyes and, and ears of, of the constituents with disabilities uh, in our neighborhoods. Um, you know, I work along with uh, th uh, 12 other very dedicated uh you know, members of the board and, and, and residents of the city who really, really care about disability issues and want to elevate, you know, those concerns to the city. And I have to, I have to say that Kristen and her staff do an excellent job uh, with listening to our, our concerns. And again, uh, Boston Breaks, uh, you know, is a direct, you know, result of the, the advocacy work, uh, particularly around the late David Vieira, a Hyde Park resident um, who passed away a couple of years ago now, uh, he really, really uh, brought up to every disability uh, advisory board meeting every month, he, he brought up, up the importance of, of pedestrian safety and, and the need to enforce the existing uh, municipal laws and, and, and Boston Breaks was really an uh, an outgrowth and a tribute to him. So that's just one example 
of an issue that the city really listened to us uh, about the need for uh, about the need for uh, public awareness. And Kristen, of course, is the commissioner for the Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Yes. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time. I hope that things continue to go well, and uh, and people will now take advantage of the newly renovated uh, activities that have occurred at City Hall Plaza. Yeah, and just yesterday, Ken, uh, there were, uh, or two days ago, there was a, a dedicated um, um, elevator uh, to a part of the part of the city hall that was was not accessible. So, so that was a, another uh, triumph that we celebrated uh, on ADA Day as well. So, I'm I'm glad to hear it, Jerry. Listen, you take care of yourself, and uh, we'll now kick it back over to Colleen and see what other ticket, uh, tidbit, tidbits she has in store for us. You too, Ken. Take care and have me back anytime. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Jerry, for sharing such great thoughts about pedestrian safety and the work of Boston Breaks. In this month's episode of Disability News and Views, we're talking a lot about cycling and how the transportation systems have expanded here in the city of Boston. I'd like to welcome Kim Foltz to the show. Welcome, Kim. All right. Thank you. So happy to be with you. Yes, we're happy to have you. And Kim works for the Boston Transportation Department. Kim, do you want to um, explain your your role in the Boston Transportation Department? Sure. So I am our senior bike share and active transportation planner. So um, I'm responsible for um, our bike share system, Blue Bikes, um, which is our publicly owned um, transportation system by bike. Um, and I'm also responsible for a lot of our bike programs. So um, we do a lot of work to teach skills in biking um, to residents in the city. Um, so I get a lot of the um, fun parts of the um, biking work that we do as part of the city of Boston. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really fun. So tell us, how long has the city been running programs like this for people to learn how to bike? We've been doing uh, learn to ride classes um, for uh, more than a decade, really. Um, but we've built up the program over the last um, maybe um, five years or so to really offer uh, um, a suite of programs um, to start with people who are just brand new to biking or maybe haven't been on a bike in years, um, all the way up to being able to um, ride comfortably and safely on streets with traffic. Um, Mayor Wu um, has set a pretty um, um, ambitious agenda around um, biking and ex expanding our bike network, um, as well as expanding our programming. So um, this year we're um, doubling the number of classes uh, or the number of people rather that we've served through um, specifically through our women bike program. Wow, that's that's great. So how can people join these programs or or who 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 is the target audience to join these programs? So our learn to ride classes um, are held um, for women and gender diverse adults um, um, in the city of Boston. So um, you know, basically, Anyone who um, identifies um, as a woman or a gender diverse who is interested in learning to ride um, a bike is welcome to attend. Um, we don't have um, special bikes you know, to, to accommodate a wider range of disabilities. Um, we've, we have uh, sort of gone down that track a little bit and uh, recognize that there's such a need for um, expertise and how you really like there's such a wide array of different bikes that are available and uh, different sorts of um, expertise that's needed from a, you know, sort of staff capacity to understand how to really um, accommodate a wide array of skills. What we're able to do is provide training on um, sort of traditional two-wheel bikes. Um, but Good. we have, yeah, really been able to um, provide training to hundreds and hundreds of women over the years um, and including people who have you know maybe have 
um, balance issues um, and you know used to know how to ride a bike but now are unsure if they can um, and you know we're, we've been able to really kind of help people work through um, those sorts of challenges um, people with some mobility issues um, you know maybe had a um, knee or hip problems where walking might be more of a challenge, but riding a bike is, you know, sort of a less of an impact. Um, and we're um, able to provide that kind of support. So um, it's, a, yeah, it's been really um, inspiring to see this, the hundreds of um, women of all different kinds of backgrounds who've come through our program and, um, you know, learn to pedal or relearned to pedal um, when in lots of times they felt like they thought they never would. Wow. That's great to hear. Um, you kind of mentioned it a little bit, like what are some of the main takeaways you want new riders or um, learn again riders to take away from the program? Yeah. So like I said, we have, um, different levels of classes. So our most basic level is literally for um, people who are just learning to pedal or, you know, maybe haven't been on a bike in a lot of years and don't know if they still can. Um, and so for them, it's just like getting to the point where they are able to, to pedal independently on their, on their own. Um, but as we move people up through um, the more advanced levels, uh, we're working on things like just getting comfortable and confident on a bike, feeling like you can take your hand off the handlebar, um, and then moving to where you can make hand signals and so that you're able to um, engage with other users of the road, um, whether it's drivers in cars or whether it's people um, walking on the streets or the sidewalks, um, being able to indicate you know, what you're going to do before you're, um, you know, making a turn or, um, you know, navigating through an intersection um, so that riders are really able to be sharing space responsibly with other people and keep themselves and other users of the road safe. So. Oh. oh, yes. Um, the Disabilities Commission, we worked with the Streets Cabinet on a uh, outreach and educa an education campaign called Boston Breaks, which kind of teaches cyclists of about all the unique needs that people with disabilities have when we're sharing the space. And we've heard nothing but positive feedback about how people want to learn how to best share the space, how they want to make Boston as collaborative and easy to navigate as possible. Have you kind of experienced the same yeah, absolutely. You know, people want, people are excited about learning to ride a bike. We hear so, um, so often from women, like, I just, I want to be able to use a bike to, to get around, or I want to be able to ride with my child or, you know, lots of different reasons that people want to, want to ride a bike, but, you know, ultimately people want to be able to do that safely and keep themselves safe and keep others safe and really, you know, share the space um, responsibly. And so um, it's been great to have the Boston Breaks uh, campaign to be able to share some resources and just help people, you know, think about like what are, um, how do we share this space effectively together and what are my responsibilities and what are the other people's responsibilities? I think it, it really, you know, helps when you sort of take a step back and think about, you know, sort of putting yourself in somebody else's um, position and think about, you know, how is it for um, someone who's got mobility challenges, you know, navigating the streets and sidewalks here and, um, you know, just having resources to be able to um, share with people. Um, it really has helped us um, communicate those kinds of things effectively with with our learners and our Learn to Ride program. Well, that's that's great. Knowledge is power. And that's good to hear. Thank you for talking with us, Kim, and, and sharing a little bit about the Women Bike Program. Before we go, can you just remind viewers again how they can join the Women Bike Program or where they can just learn more about best practices for cycling around the city? Absolutely. So um, our uh, Women's Bike Program is at boston.gov slash women dash bike. Um, or if you just Googled um, Boston Women's Bike, um, you'd probably find it. Um, so that has the complete schedule of uh, our Learn to Ride classes. 
and people can register there uh, from that, or there's links to the registration site there. Um, and um, there's also links there um, to a lot of different resources about um, biking in the city. So um, it's a good, good place to start um, to learn more. Well, thank you, Kim. And I hope the viewers can check out those links. And thank you again for your time. And um, we hope that some of our viewers uh, join you to learn how to bike. All right. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs>